Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is more division for young Christians. Today we're going to be talking about the important roles of women in the church, part three. The final question for today is, what advice do you have for the upcoming women in the church? I have the honor of being first again. <laughs> um, just really quickly for young women, I would, um, just speaking from my own experience, embrace your uniqueness. God didn't make you to be like Sister Donna or Sister Lorna or Sister Jillian. He made you to be you. And just growing up, I just felt so awkward. Like, oh, okay. Like, no one's like me. No one's like has the things that I have and what I have. So I want to encourage you to embrace your uniqueness. Don't compare yourself. And also get a mentor, get a spiritual, a, a woman mentor that can really speak into you and to really help you grow in your spiritual walk, to become a wife, to just, you know, just to walk through life with. So that's what I would leave just in short. God bless you. Um, to the younger, what advice do you have for the upcoming young women? Know that it is okay to make a mistake, it's okay to not have the knowledge is okay to not be there yet is okay to know that growth does not come overnight but it comes over time to know that god doesn't expect you to be perfect overnight but that in time that you will walk in that perfection. Know that you're not going to always get it right. Like that old mother in the church that might know every scripture, but that over time that God will mold you and he will transform you and he will take you places. But one thing I want younger women to understand that everything that you desire everything that you would like to have, everything that you want to be, that the world does not have it, but God has it for you. And that to trust God. And as Sister Dana said, don't compare yourself to others. Don't want to be like others. Know that you're different for a reason. And God got that differentness. He's going to use that differentness in a unique way. So to the younger women, look for someone that is a strong woman, a woman that is supportive, a woman that you can trust, a woman that you can confide in, a woman that will not judge you or bring down hard words on you, but a woman that will listen, a woman that will hear your inner cry, a woman that you can run to and talk to because as a younger woman, you need that. You need that in order of if you are dating, if you are in a relationship, if you are going through family issues, whatever you might be going through as a teenager, you need to have a strong woman in your life that you can run into and that you can taught things over with and serve the Lord with gladness. As a younger woman, serve the Lord with gladness. Serve God with everything that you have and he will give you the desires of your heart. I wish some person had whispered that to me when I was younger, but thanks be to God that I know it now. And so to younger women, I say to you, Serve the Lord with everything that is within you, and he will give you those desires of your heart. Amen. Um, for me, I would say truly put God first in your life um, because God really has a plan. He's not winging it along. Um, so when he thought about you, he knew exactly what he wants to do with your life. So truly put God at the center. My next thing would be is be careful with the friends that you choose. Be very mindful of that because everybody that you think might be your friends are really not. And to guard your inner circle. Um, and I think that would be the main thing. And also don't be afraid to fail. Sometimes we, we go through different things in life and we make mistakes, we make errors. Don't stay in that place. 
you know, find somebody that you truly trust, um, somebody that you know has your best interest at heart and talk to them. Like, you know, the ladies before me said, you know, get a mentor, somebody that will encourage you, somebody that will pray for you and also somebody that will hold you accountable, you know, for, for who you are and, and, and the different things that you might do in your life because accountability is very important. I think that is key in developing yourself and as you mature and as you grow. But I think those that would be the main thing. Oh, well, I would say um, to the younger women, just know that you're not alone. There is always somebody there that, um, that you can share your feelings with, that you can share your heart with. And most times that somebody would have experienced some of the things that you're experiencing now. Um, I would also say be strong because this world is so um, unpredictable. Things would come left, right, north, east, west, north, south. We just have to be so strong and on top of our game. And perseverance is very important. That's besides everything else that everyone before me would have said. <laughs> so mine is going to be similar to what Dana said and what Sister Kay said. Um, and someone else said earlier that God has a sense of humor. I agree wholeheartedly that God is funny a comedian okay so um for me <laughs> for me I would always be the odd person out um like god we we're the we're the same age we do the same things they dance I dance they have this life why can't I have that life what's wrong with me why can't I have this why can't I have this boyfriend why can't I do this why can't I get this job we went to the same school. We were in the same classes. What's wrong with me? And I remember um, Sister Barbara, Sister Barbara um, from our church, East New York, she came to me and I was, Pastor Lona was preaching. I'm sorry, I'm going to be quick. Pastor Lona was preaching and it was all about being saved, being saved, being saved. And I went to the altar and I'm like, okay, God, why am I here? Uh, hello. It's like being safe, being safe. And I was like, I already did that, been there, done that. And then Sister Barbara came to me. She was like, do you want to know why you're waiting or what you're waiting on? And, and I was like, I just kind of leaned over to her and she was like, it's because you're sanctified. Do you know what sanctified means? And I was like, no. And she says, set apart. And literally that moment in my life, friends were going away. I stopped wanting to party, things like that. And I couldn't for the life of me understand why I was so different, why I was so different. So my advice would be, don't be afraid to embrace that uniqueness that Dana was saying. Don't be afraid that when you don't look like your friends or you don't want to do the same thing, it literally felt wrong some of the things that I was doing and it was only to try to be like other people because I thought that this is where I needed to be or this is where I needed to go or this was the thing to do. So it's like, don't be afraid to be set apart. And he's like, you know why I made you different? I want you to become the leader so that they can then follow you. So don't be afraid to be in the background because you never know if, when he's ready to push you to be, um, to be in the front. Never, you never know. So embrace your uniqueness. Thank you, Ezra. I didn't say thank you before for this opportunity. Okay. So um, two things I was thinking of. One of them that really came to mind was being proactive. Um, in, in, in my professional world as well, I think as in the church, I find in the professional world, we talk a lot about being proactive and we sometimes don't kind of transfer that over into the spiritual world. My advice to young women is if you feel the call, if you have giftings and other things that you feel can, can contribute to the kingdom of God, don't be afraid to volunteer. You know, um, don't be, and, and some people will shoot you down, yes. But that's the next part of my advice. Don't be afraid to say, you know, um, I'm capable of doing this. Can I be of help in your ministry, right? Because most of us are not getting paid anyway, right? So, you know what I mean? So don't be afraid, don't be afraid to volunteer and say, you know, I'm great at, at, at draw. I'm so glad to hear Sister Baptiste talking about audio and uh, Cavell, you've got a, a, a lifeline here. Cavell is very much into um in, in, into this whole media thing, as is Ezron. Don't be afraid to come along and say, hey, now I'm great at doing PowerPoints. I'm great at doing presentation. How can I help out your ministry? So I say to you, be, be proactive. There's some people who are going to give you the, the side eye, as they say, but it, it's okay. Um, 
as I think it was somebody that said, it, it's okay to fail. Just, just go on and do it. And then my second thing is one of the first things uh, as women of God that the enemy comes after is our self-esteem. You've got to know who you are in God. And so when the enemy comes after your self-esteem, when the enemy comes after you and try to tell you you're this, you're that, you're that, you've got to remember who you are. I think it was Naomi that said, said to Ruth, who are you, daughter? You got to know who you are. Know who you are. So when the enemy comes after your self-esteem, you tell him who I am. I am a child of the king. I'm a daughter of the Lord. I am the bride. All right. And he said, okay. <laughs> and, and, and that's my advice to young women. Be proactive and remember who you are. Keep your self-esteem. I would say to young women to not be a slave to fear. I would say learn to embrace boldness. Um, I just think about every time that I was always scared to do something. I knew I had it in me, but I was always afraid. So I think about when God told Jeremiah to not be afraid of their faces. So be fearless because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And when people like Sister Rose say, put God first, literally put God first. Um, I got tired of hearing the scripture, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be had unto you. All the things that we actually want as women will come when we actually put God first. So I would say to young women, stop worrying because you're just adding stress lines to your face. So just stop worrying because we don't even have to think about those things. God has it all under control. And then I would say, um, just think about it. Distractions are going to come, um, but we should not be trying to conform to this world. We should not be followers of man, but followers of Jesus. So like Sister Dana and I, be trailblazers and continue to blaze the trails. There is something new out there that people don't have, and you are the one that has it, but God needs you to be able to step forward and allow it to come through. But if you keep trying to be like everybody else, like Sister Dana said and Sister um, see Carvel says, then we'll never get that branch on the kingdom that we're supposed to be. We are different branches, different trunks and roots and all those hands and feet and everything in the kingdom of God. So be who you were called to be. Listen to the wisdom of the elders. I think about Sister McKay sometimes when she comes to Albany, I hear her wisdom. I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. And sometimes it, sometimes for us young people, it goes to one ear and out the other. But don't see the correction of elders when they say, don't wear your skirt too high or, you know, take this, take that off. That ain't flattering to your body. I got sit, sat down a couple of times for wearing stuff I'm not supposed to wear. Sit down and be okay with understanding they're not punishing you, but they're trying to train you to be um, a modest woman in Christ. And also get in God's word, study that word and learn it for yourself. Why? So you can back up the why you serve God and why you do this and why you do that. Yes, God will ultimately show those people, you know, what it is, what it is, but you need to study to show your own self approved because there are so many people out here coming to distract you. So many people to come and show you different ways. And I'm telling you like, College, you're going to go a different way. But thank God for there are praying women. So stay under those elders so you don't, um, you know, rub them the wrong way so they stop praying for you. So, <laughs> but they're always going to love you. They're always going to pray for you. And then lastly, always find a time to talk to God. And when I say talk to God, be real. There was times when I was like, God, I'm mad at you. Why don't I have this? And why don't I have my parents? And why don't I have... You have to be real with God because that's the only way he can get you out of your own way and help you to see all of this trauma, all of the people that I've taken out of your life. That was purposeful, like Sister Michelle said. The purpose in all of that, the purpose in the struggles that you went through in your life was to help somebody else. Now, I'm not always bold enough yet to speak my testimony of what I went through and all the things that I've went through, but I know after hearing Sister Michelle's, I one day I I will be there. One day I will sit here, Sister McKay's testimony and want to be bold enough to share mine. But you are that purpose. And when you come into our lives, we're able to share those things with you. So learn from each and every lesson and then share it because you overcome by the word of your testimony and your testimony is going to help somebody else to overcome. Um, I think everything that I wanted to say has been said. Um, 
But just to reiterate, um, be yourself. I think that's one. Be yourself and self-esteem that um, um, Pastor Brown talked about. That's one of the issues I have. I think I'm not like everybody else. And I'm not saying I'm not like everyone else in the world. I'm not like everyone else in the church. Be yourself. Whoever that is, be you. And just pray to God that he directs you in the way that he wants you to go. Always be open, always be receptive to feedback, but most importantly, develop your relationship with God so you can hear from him yourself because that is for you, not what everyone else is saying through you, them to you. I didn't know that God had hired anyone to speak to you. Maybe so, maybe he has revelation, but that direct contact, that conversation should be between you and God. But in the same token, you have to be open you can't say, God, I want you to talk to me, and then you shut it all the way down. And you're going to keep doing what you want to do because you want to do it. So it all kind of ties together to just make sure that you have your own relationship. You're reading the scriptures for yourself. You're reading your, um, I like devotionals because I think devotionals breaks down the words in a very like personal conversational way. So I like reading scriptures and devotionals. If that works for you, do that. Um, so I guess in a nutshell, it's kind of what everyone else, everyone has been saying is to be yourself and get to know God for yourself through prayer, through conversation, because I don't even say prayer talking, like I've like been saying, talk to him, that is prayer, you know, and you don't have to have one designated time to talk, to pray, talk to him all throughout the day, like talk to him like you're talking to your husband, your friend, everything, he's always there. And um, read the scriptures for yourself. And if you don't understand something, ask him to reveal it to you and be open to those revelations, to those teachings, to those convictions, to those convictions. Um, and don't try to like throw it away. So yeah, that's what I think for the young people. Okay, I, um, when we think about this last question, what I'm going to say to our young women, I think the first thing that comes to my mind is to celebrate your chastity. Um, be modest in all things and beware of evil desires. And so as, as women, our beauty is not necessarily only on the outside, but let your beauty come from inside out. You are beautiful, regardless of how you look on the outside. It's God who has created us. And when he creates us, he says, we are very good. And so I want to say to us, celebrate that beauty that God has made. Um, celebrate that chastity. Um, be honored. Be honored and don't be carried away by what everybody else is saying or what everybody else is doing. Um, be honored to be who God has created you to be. And that is beautiful and chaste and modest. And, and you don't need to be um, go out of the way in order to be beautiful. You are beautiful the way God made you. And um, the other thing I want to say to our young women is be alone with God. You know, a lot of times we can get caught up in the crowd. We're in the worship. We're in the dance. We're in the congregation. We're, we're in everything that we're working in. And a lot of times we get so caught up with the work of God that we forget the God of the work. And so I'm asking us, as I'm going to say to our young women, have that alone time with God. Just be there. You and God alone, where you can be true, where you can be honest, where you can be real and have that time with him. And lastly, I'm going to say to our women, don't be stuck in your past, regardless of what the past is. If it's ugly, if it's whatever, none of us came in here perfect. All of us got something that, that that's how God had to work on. And so don't be stuck in your past. Remember that God forgives our past and he propels us to the future. So look ahead and keep going. Keep coming as God is calling you.
And I want to say thanks for this privilege for being with all of you wonderful ladies. Brother Ezra, you're doing a great job. God bless you. Um, I had a few points, but everybody said all except one. And what I would like to say to the young people would be singleness is important. I know that it's a big deal to have a boyfriend and always, you know, you feel lonely and all of these things, but being single by yourself, sometimes even though it feels lonely, it's really that time that God gives to us before marriage and kids and all the responsibility and your money no longer being your money. Before all of that, God gives us this time by ourselves to serve, to serve him, that is, to learn your purpose. And during this time, you will go through certain things. Um, what I would like to say to that is that one of the fruits of the spirit is long suffering, meaning that God is telling us in a weird way, um, you might suffer a little bit, but stick through it. So I would say that in any advice that I would want to give would be, Remember that your singleness, being by yourself for a while, before you even have a boyfriend, before you try to find a new identity with a person, try to find your identity with you and God and also take that time to heal. Um, I know a lot of young people go through a lot of trauma, either as a kid or during their years, something always happened to somebody with the world that we're living in now. Take that time in your singleness where you might be a broken puzzle and try to help let God help you fix the pieces together instead of rushing into a relationship as a scattered puzzle meet up with another scattered puzzle and y'all is two big mess together so I would say just try to try to enjoy and help yourself with purpose and serving and healing and just following God and being single by yourself for a while. And then as you do that, I literally have a plaque that I live by, this plaque here. It says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And trust me, as you partner up with God in a relationship with God first in singleness, Trust me, he will give you desires of your heart. Oh my God, such an honor to be in this room. God bless you, Renata, for sharing that. Um, but I would say most of what everybody else said, I've been crossing off my list. Said, 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 said. Um, but there's so much on my heart that I would love to share with young women. So there's a couple of other things that I would share. Um, one of which is don't be afraid to be the first. Don't be afraid to be the first. You know, there's a saying, we've never done it this way before. Don't allow that to be a boundary to stop you from what God has placed within you. That be it in the church and outside of the church, in, in the church and in the marketplace. You may be the first to start that business. You may be the first to start this foundation. You may be the first to start this group that's going to help people, but don't be afraid to be the first. Be kind to yourself. We go through issues, we go through problems, we are human beings. In the church, yes, we, we are seen sometimes um, to be so up there, but we go through some really dark moments, associate pastors, pastors or not. We go through some times where we struggle within ourselves, but be kind to yourself. It's okay, you're gonna make it through. Push past the fears, push past the boundaries and grow. It's a part of development. I would also say, prepare yourself for where you are going. It's already been said, spend time with God. We have to prepare for where we see ourselves, prepare ourselves for the future, prepare ourselves for the new, um, because the great glorious future that we are believing God for, guess what? It's even bigger and greater than what we, you can ask, imagine, or even think. So prepare yourself, every area of your life finances, mental, emotional, education, whatever it is, prepare yourself. And lastly, I would say, as you serve God, serve your family. Don't forget your family. <laughs> serve your family as you, as you serve God, serve your community. As you serve God, serve your church in every way possible. And really important, serve you, serve you be balanced 
your mental and emotional well-being is important because if we are not mentally and emotionally stable, we cannot do as thus say God with the effectiveness, the efficiency, with the love that we have, um, that God has given unto us for others that he has called us to. So those are my few words of advice. God bless you, everyone. Wow, man. My sisters, brother Ezra, just thank you so much for sharing. And I myself feel encouraged. To young women, let me just leave some thoughts with you. You've heard the sisters talk about preparation, the point of peace, knowing your position, knowing the process, understanding your path, knowing your promise, remembering to be in his presence and always serving a powerful God. You are uniquely called a kingdom daughter. You are a kingdom woman. Understand that the purpose lies within you. You are uniquely tasked and you're the only one that God put in this earth to do that particular task. So go out, be the salt and be the light. The world is waiting on you. God bless you all. The scripture said in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And so whatever you're choosing to do for God, you have to put him first. And in seeking counsel, you have to take counsel from the right source. So it's very important for you to have a knowledge of God's word. So whatever encouragement you're getting, you will balance it out with what God says. For you're seeking to please God and no other. And be willing and obedient. If you're willing and obedient to God, you will eat the good of the land. You wouldn't be poor and famishing for too long. <laughs> you might have to suffer, but not for too long. May the peace of the Lord be with you. I'm glad you include me. And I'm so happy to say, Sister Rose, you know, I was a member of the Malta Street Church <laughs> when it was Bobby Street. That was my first church when I came here. I thank you for having me. Thank you, Brother Aaron. May God bless you all. Guyana, greetings. <laughs> bless you all. So bless all of you. And I just wanted to say this. Thank you so much for coming. I know this is Women History Month. That's why I purposely had the conversation of Women History Month to show the recognition, the hard work, the it's just so much word to just explain how just important you are to the church. You're the backbone. You're, you're the mother, the healer, the, the guidance counselor. It's just so much. I just really wanted to show the appreciation, especially with the platform I have. Because we're having this platform. God is um, able to work through me. And I'm able to talk about any type of topic. And, yeah. um, and just thank you so much. And not only just in women history women, but to always show recognition to women throughout all the years, all your life. They're important to the church. Um, in my opinion, more important than men because this world wouldn't work without them. Because the Bible said, be fruitful and multiply. You can't multiply without women. So no. thank you to every single body. Today, today was a really good day, a powerful conversation. <laughs> but this is the end of the video. Thank you guys for coming back. Thank you guys for watching this conversation, powerful conversation. I pray that you were able to get so much information from this video. I'll be back next week with more videos. This is Motivation for Young Christian. I'll see you.